Hi guys, Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you. Now in today's video I will be reviewing the brand new Ryzen 5 2600 CPU from AMD. But I've decided for this review I really want to approach it from 144Hz high refresh rate gamer on a mid range budget. So I will have to apologise to you, there will be no 1080 Ti benchmarks or 20 different CPU tests for apps you won't use. This video is made strictly for the gamers on a mid range budget. So when Ryzen 1 launched it certainly had the core count but one thing that was lacking was the frequency. There hasn't been a huge boost with this generation but every Ryzen 5 and 7 CPU will overclock from 4.2 to 4.3 GHz which is certainly a nice boost over the 3.8 to 3.9 GHz that most of us were stuck to last year. Although the 1600 was hands down the best value CPU of 2017, the Core i5-8400 held the crown for best mid-range CPU for strictly gaming purposes. But this is 2018 and the Ryzen 5 is back for another round, so I've cranked my 2600 up to 4.2GHz and it's time to see if I can max out my 144Hz display. As already mentioned, this is a video for the mid-range gamer, so I'm pairing my 2600 with a GTX 1060, but expect similar performance with an RX 582. As for my overclock, I was easily able to achieve 4.2GHz at 1.4V on an Asus X370 motherboard and 16GB of 3200MHz memory. You can find a full list of the specs of this test rig in the description. Now of course this is a GTX 1060, so we will have to drop some settings but I have a really good mix of low to ultra gameplay for you today. I've decided to start this benchmark with three in-game benchmarks, all at low settings to show you the gains from overclocking your 2600. Far Cry 5 on low scores a minimum of 75 and an average of 95 frames per second, but running at 4.2 gigahertz minimums are greatly improved at 85, and we have a small gain of four frames per second for the averages. For Rise of the Tomb Raider, I opted for low instead of the lowest preset. At stock, we have a minimum of 53 5 and an average of 120. As for overclocks at 4.2 GHz, the minimum was 65.29 and an average of 128.5. Ghost Recon Wildlands showed very little gains with the minimums of 87.65 and 91.2. And as for the average, at stock it scores 107.92 and 111.84 frames per second when overclocked. Moving on to some gameplay then. Now I know that Grand Theft Auto 5 is getting old but it still has a huge player base so that's why it's included today. I normally benchmark this game at very high settings with FXA on and advanced graphics off. I wouldn't go any lower than these settings as you can see here I'm currently causing mayhem in the most intensive area from the built in benchmark and the CPU is clearly bottlenecking. Even when I drop to high settings we're having similar frames per second, not that's a bad thing as the frames are well over 60. Battlefield 1 is a real mixed bag when dropping the settings. There are some obvious games from playing on the low preset but it really comes down to what game mode or map you're playing. I did find for the most it was getting an average from between 120 and 135 frames per second until I loaded up a round of Amiens and as you can see when the round is getting intense with everyone after one objective the frames per second aren't that much better playing on medium or ultra preset. Forza 7 is a bit like GTA 5 where you should just play it at the max settings that you can. This game definitely favours a highly overclocked Intel CPU over AMD's Ryzen. That being said, you will find big gains in Forza when you overclock it to 4.2 GHz. But it's absolutely no surprise that at Ultra, Overwatch maxes out my 144Hz panel. I was thinking about adding some more esports titles to this video, but I think we all know the answer to that question in regards to maxing out the panel. Moving on to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, I originally intended to go for low, but for let's see what the 2600 can do on the lowest preset and it has no trouble pushing them frames with average fps mostly between 125 and 135 my only complaint with this preset is the draw distances i busted a gut thinking there was a buggy ahead of me only to find out it was loads of bags of rubbish moving on to the final game then sledgehammer's attempt at getting boots on the ground i'm running call of duty world war 2 at medium settings with fxaa I've never really been a big fan of this game just to how lacking in content it was at launch day but I must say at 144Hz I actually really enjoyed it and I did stay on for a few more rounds after getting this footage. 
So there are the benchmarks and sadly even at 4.2 GHz Ryzen still struggles with many AAA titles to deliver 144 frames per second and that crown still remains with the 8700K but the 2600 isn't an 8700K, it's a 2600 and it's half the price. It offers fantastic gaming performance across the board and it's perfect for streamers and content creators too. Many of the games tested today, although are great at 144Hz, are also great at 60Hz. I would rather play games like Far Cry 5 and Assassin's Creed with higher texture settings with frames between 45 and 75 than play them at low with 100 frames per second. Which leads me to the conclusion of this video, are the Ryzen 2600 and 144Hz display with a mid-range graphics card a good pair? They're a great pair, 144Hz isn't just about 144 frames per second, it's about breaking past 60Hz, turning VSync off and playing your games how they were intended to be played. So that's it from me today, if you like the video leave a like, if you dislike the video leave a dislike and if you really like a video make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, goodbye.